Alright guys, so at this point in time, I'm sure you guys saw the cam video. If you didn't see the cam video, go check it out. This thing sounds super rowdy. Let me put a little clip here so you guys can hear how it sounds if you haven't. So that is finished and we are just chugging right along with this build you guys. So right now I'm still waiting for the parts or tools to show up so I can finish the rear end. So that's also a part so we can't really drive it or do anything. But if you guys recall on the last episode I told you guys I had ordered the seats. So the leather for the seats has shown up since this is just absolutely roasted. So what I also want to do we're going to be recovering the seats but I want to get this carpet out of here and get the carpet out of here because I want to clean it and then I'm going to use some fabric paint on it because it is sun faded in certain spots and then darker in others so there's no rips or tears and it's not beat up but it's just kind of sun faded and I want to just make sure it doesn't like smell in here so um, I'm gonna remove this back plastic portion that uh, is underneath the carpet and then I should be able to yank this carpet out of here once I kind of move everything out of the way and then now uh, we can clean the carpet Use some fabric paint on the carpet and then hopefully this carpet will be decent, recover the seats and we might have an interior by the end of this video. So pretty exciting. All right, so carpet is out. I'm probably gonna take this little bracket and uh, let's paint it black since uh, she's all apart. Look at that. We even got the Vintag under here. Cool. So that's that. Let me zip this off, we'll paint it black, and then uh, we'll get to the carpet. Hopefully I can get the smell out of the carpet. That's, uh, that's the biggest thing I'm worried about right now. All right, so this is the carpet, and this is kind of what I was explaining in there, is from the sun, you can see all sorts of patches that are extremely faded, so way over there is all faded looking and over here is darker and faded lines so plan is to hopefully clean it maybe get the must smell out of it it doesn't like stink like anything weird but just like old like musty smell so i want to see if i can get that out i might try and pull the insulation off the back side because this i think is holding some stink on the back so this is just kind of sound deadening and whatnot so i might try to peel that off the back just so in case that's holding any of the smell i just have to worry about the actual carpet on the top side of the rubber piece so even though this might be a little bit of sound deadening and insulation and whatever i think the truck's gonna be rowdy enough that we're not worried about uh that too much but let's we'll see what happens that's uh that's the plan All right, so we got that all off. Uh, came off pretty pretty easily. So, like I said, I want to clean all this like spugats and all that. So that thing is holding a ton of stink. The other thing is that would be hard. Once we get that wet, it's gonna be hard to get the moisture back out of it. So this just makes more sense. We got the carpet on the other side. This one I have a replacement carpet, and replacement carpets don't even have that insulation on the back side. They just have a carpet like this. So not too worried about it. It's gonna be all good noises we're gonna be hearing anyways from that thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead, pressure wash it off, and then uh, we'll get some carpet cleaner on the other side, obviously. Probably get some degreaser on here so that hopefully any stink of whatever that is um, hopefully gets out of it. And then uh, we'll wash it, gotta let it dry, and then hopefully we can paint this thing with the fabric paint on the other side. Okay, so it is definitely raining. I cleaned the bottom side. Now I'm gonna scrub and clean this side and we'll rinse it off and we'll see what we got. And we're also taking apart the seats for the new upholstery, so I'll show you guys that too. All right, so we're inside in some air conditioning for a change to get these done. So I started to pulling off the old covers. Here is the brand new cover. So these are a complete cover, not just like a normal seat cover. You take off the old ones and these ones clip into place like factory. So here's the top. There's the bottom 
And as you can see, like I said, all the factory clips and all that stuff. One thing we do have to mess with is there is these hog rings. So we need hog ring pliers to be able to get these. So I gotta remove the old ones and then we're gonna have to go around that bar. So you can see here how this one is through. So that's not gonna be that fun, but that's part of this whole process. These things here, so those we gotta remove them and then we got new ones because there's some spots where the material is cinched down with these hog rings. So anyways, let's get these two off and then now we can get to putting the new stuff on. So can't wait to see what they look like with the new leather. All right, so I was gonna show you guys exactly how I was going through the procedure of getting the seat covers on, but it wasn't going as well as I had hoped. So they're actually going to get sent back to the company because they're gonna have to make some altercations to them or they're just gonna completely remake some of these covers because they weren't fitting that well. And for the price that I paid for these, you guys, they should be fitting absolutely phenomenally. So just so you guys know, each pretty much each section was like a hundred and a quarter if you kind of even it out or I guess, yeah. So it was like $500 for top bottom top bottom so and plus tax and it came up to like 530 and then the other thing too is i don't know if it's just the fact that mine is old at this point or their material is just a slight different color but hopefully you guys can see that this is more of a creamy color versus this is a little bit darker tan so originally i was going to try to just save my center console but i think i'm going to end up just re-wrapping the center console as well to match but i threw this over and these have these um hog type clips so what happens is you essentially cinch them down on here and it holds the seat into place so i don't have them affixed here but the reason why i don't is because i was just checking the fitment on this one so there's also a clip that goes there to pulls this pulls this seam and then this seam as well and what was happening is there was a ton of loose fabric here and they made this section too long where it goes down and underneath the seat and wraps to itself so they're gonna adjust it the seat bottoms aren't too bad here's one that's completely done and this is what i mean this part here this is super loose and it's not pulling adequately on the back side this is also a little loose which is kind of a bit annoying but i can i can deal with that and i can fix that but the other part there was just no way of getting around it so this is the result that i mean so they're fitting half decent this I'm fairly happy with. I don't think it gets a whole lot better than that. But look at this here. So this was super loose. Up here fits half decent, but this, there's no way to get that pulled tight. So I'm gonna send this back. I gotta box it up. I'm also sending one of my original covers back and uh, they're gonna alter them and then send it back or make me a new one like I mentioned. So, But some other stuff did show up. So I guess we're doing a little kitchen tour here. <laughs> but. I got another Timken bearing. So I got a brand new bearing. I can use this as a setup bearing. Um, behind the scenes, and here we go. I got the uh, Crocodile Dundee hat on here. But Holly, essentially the new gear set, I tried using pretty much, and I'll talk about it in a second. You can usually use the stock shim and you'll get pretty close as far as your gear setup. But this thing does not want to give us a nice pattern just with the stock shim. So what I'm thinking is maybe the bearing's worn out and that's what's causing my uh, pinion gear to not be in the correct position. So I tried setting it up with a used gear, but I'm gonna use this brand new bearing as a setup bearing and uh, hopefully we'll start to get it dialed in. But let me go out to the shop and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Hopefully we can get this rear end done today. All right, so I've been messing around with a bunch of stuff. So we've got brand new bearings for our rear end and we've also got some shims. I got my calipers and this is the 355 gear set. I was just messing around with this new tool I got. This is actually a pinion bearing puller. So it's got these like clamps that go around and it pulls off your pinion bearing without destroying everything. Pretty cool uh, tool, but have that. So I yanked off because I wanted to see what shim was underneath the 355 gear set. And they're both about the same. If you guys look right here, this one is a 29, so 29 thousandths from the factory. And then the other one, where was it stamped? It was a 25 right there. So not that much different but um i'm not able to get a good pattern on our gear set so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull this all back out 
and I am going to install the new bearings because I was trying to do this with used bearings, which yeah, probably makes sense, but that stuff didn't show up until uh, just now. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull it out. I'm gonna put in a new race. I got that brand new bearing I showed you. I'm gonna use my Dremel and uh, take out a little bit of the inner portion so we can slide it on and off and use it as a setup bearing. And then we'll have a new bearing, a new race, and then we can start dialing in the shims on our pinion so that we can start getting a good pattern here. So anyways, that's the plan. Let's get working. All right, so we've got two brand new races in here. So we got those all in. Now I've got a brand new bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and ream out the inner portion so we can use it as a setup bearing and then we should be on track. New races, new setup bearing. This should be dialed in as far as what our pinion depth should be. I don't know why it's been fighting me a little bit, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this, set it up with a brand new bearing, brand new race, and then our shims should be accurate so that we can put on our new bearing and be close. So let's ream this out and uh, get back to it. All right, so we got our setup bearing, brand new bearing, reamed out, and I'm gonna go ahead and put 54 thousandths on here. So, because the 29 wasn't enough, and then I tried 40, still wasn't enough, but we're gonna have new bearings, try 54. So that's gonna slide on here, our shim stack. This is our setup bearing, so this will go on here like so. And this is just gonna slide down hand fit like that, and then I can literally just pop it off with my hand, so. That's the reason for doing that. So there we go, we're gonna do that. We're gonna throw it in, I'm gonna lube up the bearings. We'll put a load of preload on this. I'm not gonna put the crush sleeve in here, we're just gonna preload them. And then uh, we'll run a pattern and see what the heck we got on this thing. So I just ran our bearings around with the drill just to kind of get them settled in and we have oil on the bearings and we're within the spec. You guys can see there about 15, 20 inch pounds of resistance. So we're good on the preload of the bearings. So now we can go ahead, throw our carrier back in, set up our backlash and then uh, we'll see what kind of pattern we got. All right, so we've got everything lined up. We've got, I ended up purchasing two of these tools, you guys, because it just makes it way easier than having to take it out every time. So I've got one in here so I can run over and I can run the carrier this way. And I got the other tool chilling here. I can run the carrier the other way <laughs> and it just makes it way easier. And then I've got my dial indicator here and we're about 9,000. So if you see there, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera. So we're zeroed out and then we're pretty much 9,000. So. We're definitely good on the backlash. Everything's tight. Um, I torqued down our adjusters as well. So those are torqued down. Our cat bolts are torqued down. We've got the right preload on that. So now we'll put uh, paint on here. So we'll put some marking compound on here. And then we're gonna put a little bit of resistance on our carrier while we run it through the pinion gear. And we'll see what kind of pattern we got. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take some of this. And I'm gonna wipe it on probably about four teeth it here so that way we get a nice pattern. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to my drill. I'm gonna uh, put a rag on it and that way we can simulate a little bit of resistance. And we'll run it. There's that way. Now 
Okay, so after running the pattern, you guys, you can see here on our drive, it is not too, too bad. Well, let me correct that. It's not at the top of the tooth, but it's still hanging off the edge. So at least it's got some depth, but it's still, you can see it's coming to about there. We want to try to get to the center. And then our coast, you can see right here, it's hanging off the edge there. Redo all this, unfortunately. So let me clean off all the paint, take out the carrier, take out our pinion, take off our bearings, and let's try it again. All right, so we got everything set back up again. Here we go. We got about nine thousandths of an inch. So just over eight, almost nine thousandths. So she's nice and tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and put gear marking compound on here again and uh, cross your fingers that uh, I don't have to keep redoing this thing. Hopefully we're dialed in on our shims. Okay, you guys, so after a bunch of messing around, we ended up getting a decent pattern on this. So if you guys remember when it was in the other axle over there, it was running on the edge of the tooth and that was a factory setup. So when I tried the stock shim, it was uh, not the greatest. So we ended up putting, I researched it and from the research that I found online, people said a 32,000 was one of the factory shims. The ones that I took out of here was a 25, a 29, but they didn't seem to uh, have an ideal pattern. When I put the 32 in here, now I'm starting to get a nice pattern in the center. And then on the bottom, we're also getting a nice contact patch in the center as well. And it's deep in the tooth, so it's not like hanging off the top. So pretty happy with that. And now we have to take it all apart again. We have to press on our actual bearing because I only have a brand new setup bearing on there. So we'll have to press on our new bearing, put the crush sleeve on here, reinstall our pinion, and then we have to set it up all again. So this is just to find the correct shims. So pretty happy with that. We got six thousandths. The spec is between six and eight thousandths of play. So I don't want to get my hands full of paint right now, but uh, backlash, we got six thousandths of backlash. So we're good there. And uh, we're gonna wrap it up for the night because it's late here, but I wanted to get this done and we'll continue in the morning. So I've got my shim in here. This is our setup bearing, and I'm gonna take our brand new bearing. I'm gonna press it on since uh, we found the shim. We don't have to use our setup bearing anymore. Press on this brand new Timken bearing, and then we can reinstall our pinion. This time, we're gonna put in our crush sleeve right here. So we'll install that. We're gonna have to crush that down, get our nice preload on our bearings, and then we can actually reset up the pattern and go through it all again. And I am so sick of gears right now. I just want this to be over with. And I've got my dial here, so you can see here, which uh, you need an impact for. So now that we've crushed down our crush sleeve, I've got my dial here, and you can see, if I can do this with one hand, we've got 20 inch pounds here. So just over 20, which is good. Spec is uh, 15 to 30. So just over 20 here, hopefully you can see. So might be on a bit of an angle but double checked it so we're good there now we can go ahead and throw in our carrier so the hard part's done we got a brand new pinion seal brand new pinion bearings new races and uh we put a little bit of rtv on the back of our seal so that uh that's sealed and uh a little bit on our threads as well so that none can seep through the threads and even on the washer just for extra precaution so now i'm gonna go ahead put in our carrier and uh, let's get this done
All right, so everything's torqued down to spec. We got 75 foot-pounds on our side adjusters over here. If you guys can see, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. Pretty much zeroed out. We've got about eight and a half thousandths. For our backlash, caps are torqued down to 100 foot-pounds, so now we can uh, run a pattern double check and uh, we should finally be done oh my god you guys I wanted to make sure that this was done good done correctly so I don't have to have issues but I definitely took a lot longer than I wanted to on this but hey it's only gonna get faster from here okay so I'm pretty happy with this you guys so you can see here our patterns in the center on our drive and then over here on the coast hopefully you can see it our pattern is in the center there so we're gonna go ahead and clean the paint off I'm gonna put our clips in that hold our adjusters and then we can start putting axles back in the whole works I'm so over this thing right now but at least she's done Okay, so I was, probably should have looked at this before, but might as well make everything new. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that bearing does not look happy. It is all gritty and falling apart. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to get some new wheel bearings at the same time, because that one does not look in good shape. So I'm gonna head over to the store. Um, I don't wanna wait any longer. I would prefer to get uh, maybe some t Timkins, but we're gonna do national. I found some national bearings, so that should be half decent. Get those, use a puller, pop those out, and uh, yeah, hopefully this is over soon, boys. I've ha had about enough of this. Okay, so we just left AutoZone. I've got bearings, seals. We didn't get their last brand, don't worry. And then I got a puller. I have a slide hammer, but I wanted to get their one just in case for some reason the threads are different. Start up the Hellcat Ram. Jeez, let's go. Can't really give her the beans here, but we on our way back. Kind of make do with the uh, AutoZone uh, bearing puller tool, but we got her out. I don't know if you guys can see it. Check out that like metallic sludge. Super glad we caught that because this one is no bueno. So I'm gonna clean out the axle tube, then we'll get in the new stuff, and then we can uh, just replace the other side. The other side's not as bad, but might as well do both at the same time. And then check out that metallic just sitting there. So definitely gonna clean all this junk out of here. Well using our tool as a big q-tip and about a million rags later we've got the axle tube pretty much clean so i've just been going all the way in and all the way back out which i had of uh noticed that those bearings were as rough as they were but whatever either way we're getting it so we've been doing this and using this as a big old q-tip scrubbing it clean we're pretty much ready for the new stuff now. So I've been getting all the junk out of there. And we'll get the new stuff in here. Well, at least this side is oil and not uh, metal material. So this side was a lot better than the other side, but new on both sides. Okay, so we got that bearing in. We also put a brand new seal in. I just put a little bit of RTV on the outside. Just helps uh, seal on the outer perimeter as well. So that's all done. And then let's go ahead, and pop the air side in. Okay, so seals in, bearings in, and I was just cleaning up our axle shafts and the saga continues. 
check out the groove that is worn in there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but... Or if you guys can hear me running my fingernail across it. It... That bearing chewed through that axle shaft. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put the other ones in. Um, these are from the original SST. They look in pretty good shape actually for being a million years old, but they don't have any grooves, no issues. So I'm gonna clean this off, put it in. The only difference between the two you guys is our wheel studs. So the wheel studs on our third gen axle, they're a little bit larger, but you can actually press the other ones in, but you can see there versus this one. They're a little shorter and you can see that they're smaller, but we could press the other ones in, but other than that, shafts are the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the original SST axles in this thing because this one I do not want to put inside that new bearing. So both our axle shafts are cleaned off. I put some oil on our seal so we can slide these in. So let's get these in there. All right, so yes, we are gonna be putting brand new rotors on. Yes, we're gonna be putting new pads. Yes, I'm gonna be painting the hubs and the calipers, but that time's not now. I just wanna make sure everything's gonna be good with our other axles, with our newer axle setup, so to speak. It sounds confusing, but our older drum brake axle or axle shafts versus putting them in this disc brake setup. So everything's good, we're in. I have everything in, our retainer is in, our pin is down tight, all of our hardware is tight. So I'm gonna go ahead, run a bead of RTV, put this diff cover on here, and then it's pretty late right now, but I'll be able to fill this thing up with fluid and uh, put this thing on the ground and reconnect our drive shaft. A lot of little things, but let's at least get some RTV on here, put this on, that way this can dry overnight and we'll be good. All right, so we've let that cure. It's actually a few days later. I've been just doing all sorts of other random stuff around my place, but went ahead and picked up the Mopar limited slip additive since it does have the original limited slip disc pack in there. So I'm gonna throw a bottle of this in there and then I'm gonna just put in some conventional oil for now. Kind of want to run through it, make sure everything is good and then maybe drop it again. So I don't want to put super expensive synthetic stuff in there just yet. I kind of just want to run through everything and then I'll probably drop it a little bit early. So we got some 85, 140. Let's get that in there and then we can put the wheels on, put it down and uh, see if she moves. Okay, so truck is down and back on the ground. Last thing I wanna do is these fans from SPAL, I don't wanna mess up the pronunciation, but SPALs, <laughs> they ended up showing up. And we're gonna put these on because we just have these cheap overseas fans and they are shaking the hell out of this truck right now. So the whole like radiator sport shakes just when these fans kick on. So I just wanna swap them out. They should be a direct replacement because these are kind of like some knockoff fans. So I should be able to just unscrew these and then screw the other ones in. But in order to do that, we are gonna to have to take out the whole fan assembly. So let me just blast off these 10 mils. We'll put it on the bench and we'll bolt up our new fans. Okay, so it might be windy, but it is hot as heck out here, you guys. It's been like 95 plus humidity, so like over 100 degrees. So you're gonna to have to listen to the fan while we install fans. So the, uh, these fans are going to flow way more than these cheap ones. Even though they look similar, I promise you, they are not. So one thing is with the pattern on these fans, we are gonna have to drill some holes, so not a big deal. I'm gonna drill four new holes in here. I can still use the existing hardware. We'll drop these guys right in here, and then we can bolt up this fan. And then we're also going to change over to our wire, because I ended up putting a different style of insulated and uh, weatherproofed connector on there so we'll do that for both as well.
All right, so our spal fans are installed. They're ready to go. So let's go ahead and get that dropped back in the truck and then we can get it running. All right, check it out, fans are in. So let's go ahead, we'll move the Hellcat swap ram out of the way and then let's pull this thing out and let it run for a few minutes. There we go, the Hellcat ram. Still have to finish a few things on this one too, boys. Um, still haven't finished the gauge surround and all that. Still have to convert it to keyless entry, all that good stuff. Still sounds mean as ever though. All right, so our seats still haven't came back from the upholstery shop and I still have to paint the carpet. So can't really take it for a drive sitting on the floor or at least I don't want to. But anyways, let's fire this up. I gotta move these out of the way uh, once I move it forward and then we can go from there. here and see how she does get our fans kicking on all that good stuff so we're gonna have to build an intake for it as well so one thing at a time boys but she's running boys well we drove it out and I wanted to try to dial in the tune a little bit and in doing so I cannot get this thing to idle right now so I'm gonna have to mess with it a little bit more but I still want to get this video out for you guys this weekend so while I play with that I'll leave you guys in suspense as far as the rest of it running and driving and I want to be able to drive this thing but I need a seat to at least drive it around and do that so let me dial in the tune, let me get some interior in here, and then in the next video, we should be able to drive this thing. So, super exciting. Let me know what you guys think of this project so far. I'm super excited and happy that it's almost done. Also, I will be at Moparty this year with this truck, probably both Hellcat trucks, and hopefully the Jeep project. So, we're gonna be going to Moparty. We're also gonna be trying to make it to LS Fest this year with the Jeep, so, a lot is on the way you guys so make sure you're subscribed and if you can come out to mo party or ls fest this year i will be there with the vehicles so thanks for watching give it a thumbs up see you on the next one